So now I want to just walk you through this idea of producing user interfaces with VBA. <clears throat> Notice that um, this time when I opened the file, I got a security warning here. This is again an Office 07 problem. It'll look different for you, but I can press options here, enable the content. Okay, so now this should all work. So this is sorted alphabetically. I can sub sort by melt temperature and back alphabetical. I can also use this drop down to grab the chrome melting temperature, chrome 2130, and then and then there's just formulas here to calculate these other melt points in other units. And this stuff down here we'll see how to do next week. These two we saw how to do last week and we're really dealing with this. I click add a new element. I can type um, if I can spell it, beryllium, and I forget what the melt temperature is. Let's say it was 1400K. I'm not sure. Uh, and then I write save to sheet, and oh, it's hidden. Look at that. So I can um, unhide that, and there's the beryllium. Let's do another one since that one was kind of weird. Uh, what is lead? Is lead in there already? Lead is not there. I don't know what that is if... Um, Gold is 1338. Let's just say it's 1100. I really don't know. Then I can save that and see it just gets dumped in there. And notice how they are automatically added to this list. So now this is lead, assuming that was right. Okay. So that's what we're trying to create. Um, we need to go to the VBA editor to do this. So I go to Visual Basic. Um, there is a module here. There's the sort melt, uh, and you can't see a lot of it. But here it is. I did this by recording a macro and then doing a sort from the data menu in, in Excel. And this is the sort alphabetically. Um, and this is the code to uh, attach to the button that's in the sheet that shows user form one. That's all it does. Okay. Uh, we can take a look at user form 1. Here it is. And then if I double click, say, this element, I get um, the, the macro that's executed when that command button 1 is clicked. Okay. The uh, second button is the cancel button. It just unloads the user form. Okay, let's go back to the, the, the user form itself. Um, see if I can get the properties window. I will go view properties window. There we go. Now, uh, so this button here, which is, you know, hard to see because it's all, everything's kind of cramped, but you see command button one is the name of that button. And so that's why when I double click that, it gave me the click, um, um, what is it? Action, the qu click event a macro for command button one. So again, each of these entities, each of these um, control uh, controls has a name and then when we want to act on them we refer to them by name. So notice how this is text box one. This is text box two. So when I looked at this um, and I said that uh, the text from text box 1 should be written to column A and the text from text box 2 to column B. That's why, because if I go back, this is um, this right here is text box 1. So the element name will be text box 1 and the text of that will be the name that gets written back to the sheet. Um, also, I mentioned about properties. Uh, notice that, for example, uh, under this text box, I can change the background color. So I click background color and then click this and I could say choose this blue and I get a background of blue and um, if I go down further I can change font. I think the color is here. No, I can change it to bold and bigger. But the font, oh Maybe that's foreground color. Let's see. So suppose we made that. Sorry, this is sort of scrolling off. 
make it white and then put in a default for the text yeah so I got white foreground color is also known as the font color and background color is that blue alright so that's how you deal with this um, if you want to change the look of these I can change the size just by dragging but if I want to change colors backgrounds put scroll bars on them um, all that sort of thing. Change the alignment, left aligned, right aligned. Let's see if we can center this. So we go to text align, click that, click the down window, align center, and you see there now that text is centered. So if you want to change the look or feel, uh, so to speak, of a control, just go to this properties window and start playing around, and, and, and after a while you can sort it all out. All right, now let's look at um, creating a new user form just so, so you see kind of how it works. Um, I'll go insert user form. So I get a user form too. Uh, again, if I want to change the background color, um, those are pretty boring colors, but that's due to my color scheme. It's grabbing colors from my default color scheme. Uh, I guess I could make it, I could use that same blue just to give it something. Um, then to uh, get a control, I do insert. Uh, no, I don't. I have to highlight that. I highlight the user form and I get my controls back. I can make buttons. I can make labels. And, and that doesn't show up very well. So now under that label, now it's highlighted. I can go and change, what was it, foreground color is really my font color. And now if I See if I can grab white from somewhere. Clap white window background. So that's a little better. And then if I go to font, I could make it bigger and bold. And there we go. All right. Uh, text boxes are here. Just map them out, and that's all you need to do. Um, if you really want any of these other features, um, you'll have to play with them a little bit to sort out how to use them. But it's pretty straightforward. You know, a combo box is sort of a drop down. And um, those are easy to do. Okay. And they have their own properties. Um, then once I'm here, I can just double click this and it gives me a macro suitable for writing um, code that will be executed when that command button is clicked. So that's really all there is to it. Now, um, the stuff I'm doing is pretty simple. If you decide ahead of time you want to do a certain kind of application, you'll have certain needs. You want to think through the design of that first, and then you'll have certain things you want to carry out. And, um, you know, it's not always when you're first starting out, it takes a little work how to do even the littlest things. Uh, but if you do more and more of it, you'll kind of get the hang of it. So my goal here is to expose you to this. Some of you will get interested and, and um, uh, spend a lot of time on it. Others won't be so interested and will just do enough to get your exercise done. That's okay. Um, it's really up to you beyond, beyond what I asked you to do in the, in the lesson how much time you want to spend on this. Now in terms of resources, I've listed some books in the study guide. Those are good resources. Um, the internet is an excellent resource and then there is help built in here into Visual Basic. Okay, So any of those will um, get you started. And I think that's about it. Um, the rest I think is fairly straightforward uh, other than I, as I say it takes some practice to kind of think the way the folks who wrote this code think and, and figure out how to do things. So in the short run, when you're first starting out, the, the thing to do is to try things. But if you get stuck, just send me a message or post a message in the forums and um, ask people if they know how to do a certain thing. And usually others can can help you out. Um, the, the, the one thing that's helpful is if you do, if you're trying to do something, uh, a lot of times it helps me um, if you post or attach the spreadsheet you're working on uh, so that I can look at that and try to figure out what you're trying to do and then try it out myself without having to start over. So feel free to post if you need help and, and go ahead and attach spreadsheets and stuff if you um, if it's convenient. All right. Otherwise, good luck with this and just let me know if you need help.